So I first became interested in the topic of global health when I was doing research in South Africa. Um, I was working with an HIV support group and activist organization that happened to be a choir. And I was really interested in how music was playing a role in the group's ability to support one another and engage in HIV activism in South Africa when there was a large amount of HIV stigma um, in South Africa at the time. And But what I started to realize the more time I spent with this group of really amazing people is that they were connected in really intimate and interesting and somewhat problematic ways with researchers and doctors from uh, Ivy League institutions in the United States and places in uh, England, Great Britain, and really kind of in, um, peripherally involved in the world of global health. And one thing I learned by the end of my time in South Africa was that the group I was working with kind of felt exploited. They felt like they were being used as what they called poster children for a movement, but not really receiving enough of the benefits of their involvement with that movement. And so after I finished that research, I decided that I was going to try and investigate the other side, um, partly because I wanted to know what it looked like from the perspective of the global health professionals themselves. I didn't want to just take for granted that um, South Africans living with HIV were definitely always or only being exploited. I wanted to know what it was like from the perspective of global health professionals. Um, and so I started thinking about doing a project on global health in Atlanta and in other places. And then I was put in contact by a former student, uh, Gabriela Alvarado, with a global health organization in Costa Rica that was focusing on global health education. And Costa Rica is a really amazing place to do global health research and global health education because Costa Rica has a socialized medical system. And so in theory, everyone gets all their health care for free. Um, so you go to the doctor because you've got a runny nose, that's free. You go to the doctor to have heart surgery, that's free. Well, free in the sense that they don't have to pay for it in the moment, it's paid for through the tax system. Um, now, even though in theory everyone has access to health care, in practice, sometimes uh, people are left out. So um, through my involvement with this organization, um, which has now become a collaboration with the Organization for Tropical Studies in Costa Rica, I've become really especially uh, focused on what's happening in southern Costa Rica with indigenous Costa Ricans um, and also indigenous Panamanians who cross over the border from Panama into Costa Rica uh, during coffee picking season. So this introduces a, another really fascinating aspect of health in, in Costa Rica, which is um, global commodities. So coffee is this global commodity. I'm kind of addicted to coffee myself. I love good coffee. I love Costa Rican coffee. So it was really um, profound to me that I'm sitting here in my office in downtown Atlanta or at a nearby coffee shop buying Costa Rican coffee that was probably picked by an indigenous um, Panamanian migrant crossing over from Panama into southern Costa Rica um, for part of the year, who's getting paid very little, who doesn't have access to health care while um, they, they're in Costa Rica um, because the system is socialized and you have to live there for a year in order to get access to care. And so I'm sitting here in Atlanta, I'm drinking this coffee and not realizing that I'm connected in this global kind of web to um, marginalized Costa Ricans that I'm hoping to maybe help or engage with in other ways. So the coffee picking is a really uh, important, actually, an important aspect of Costa Rican access to care, to health care, because coffee is such a big commodity in Costa Rica. Um, and so in my own research, I'm interested in, in studying this more and focusing on HIV and AIDS in communities in southern Costa Rica, marginalized Costa Rican communities. Um, I've also developed a really amazing study abroad program connected to this in collaboration with the Organization for Tropical Studies. And um, this involves going down to Costa Rica for about three weeks in May, um, working with global health professionals and medical professionals in southern Costa Rica and learning more about Costa Rica, about the healthcare system, and about access to care and problems with access to care among indigenous Costa Ricans. 
Um, you get to spend some time with some really amazing people, including a woman who revolutionized the Costa Rican healthcare system in the 1970s, and her husband, who's an indigenous Costa Rican, who helped craft the Indigenous Bill of Rights in the 1980s for the United Nations. Um, and Costa Rica is also, you know, of course, a beautiful place to visit. It's a tropical place with a, a huge amount of wildlife biodiversity, and it's easy to visit. It's relatively safe. Um, you don't need a visa. It's tourist friendly. So overall, I think that Costa Rica is a really great place for students to have um, an initial experience of traveling abroad, of learning about what global health is, uh, having something to put on their resume as global health experience, and um, learning more about medical anthropology and how we, in particular, uh, think about global health.